when you're trying to film and you have a 10 year old creeping outside the door, go away. <sighs> My life. for tuning back into another video of Glamorous Gems. I hope you all are doing well and um, I just wanted to come in and share with you my C-section recovery tips. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into the video. So as you all know, or you may not, um, I had a daughter, a beautiful baby girl, April 2nd, and I did have her via C-section. So she was my second cesarean. Um, I have a 10 year old son and um, they're 10 years apart. So as far as the actual scar, I'm just going to jump into that. Um, they were able to seamlessly go right back in, I guess, because it had been 10 years. So um, there wasn't too much scar tissue. And this is going to sound contradictory because I have scar tissue on the inside. But as far as the incision itself, they were able to go right into the same incision. I know a lot of women have told me that um, when they've had multiple C-sections, sometimes they have two smiley faces instead of one. And of course, with me being plus size, I'm like, girl, I can't handle any extra stuff down there. I'm already got the little fupa thing because I'm plus size, so I can't have two scars as well. That's just not cute, you know? So I had to really be grateful for that, that I had a good doctor because I didn't even have a conversation about it. I just asked him in the beginning, like, um, are you going to be able to go back in the same incision? And he pretty much told me he wasn't sure. But whenever I did go ahead and um, look at it, it's completely seamless. I'm seven weeks postpartum now, and actually, it looks really good. I mean, if I was to lose all of my belly fat and wear a bikini, I mean, it, it just looks really good. He did a great job. But as far as the scarring that I have, um, whoever <laughs> did the first one, they messed me up completely, apparently, because my doctor told me it took them about an hour or so. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? I feel like I have lipstick on my teeth. But anyhow, um, they told me that it took them about an hour and a half just to get me back right. They had my bladder in one spot, the liver in another. I don't know what they had going on, but they had it a mess. So um, I'm grateful that I went to this doctor because they really took excellent care of me. Um, as far as my healing for the C-section, I'm gonna jump into that part of it. So I healed up pretty quick as far as pain management. So I was on the Percocet, but I was only on there for like two weeks in conjunction with the ibuprofen. And um, I was really, really dedicated and I was really so focused on being mobile because I knew, you know, my son needs me and, you know, it was a huge adjustment having a 10 year old who can pretty much do a lot of things for himself and then bringing a newborn into the equation. Yes, I have help from my husband, but you know, who's gonna rely on them to do everything, you know, unless you are doing it yourself and you're a mom, y'all understand where I'm coming from with this. We feel like a lot of times we're the best person to do different things such as laundry, everything cooking but my husband i will say he stepped up to the plate i mean he he just took it made me love him so much more even though we've been married for 10 and a half years it made me love him so much more how he took such great care of me like he handled everything you know so i'm so grateful for him for that but anyway i'm jumping way off subject so as i was saying um I was very, very um, adamant about, you know, being mobile and things like that. So I didn't overexert myself, but I had to get, I had to get up off my behind and try to do things so I can heal up. So as far as my healing process, um, it went pretty good in my opinion. I'm still healing internally, but as far as, you know, just the healing and scarring and all of that, it went good. Now, as far as bleeding, um, like my menstrual cycle and all of that, I'm gonna jump into that. So, um, of course, you know, I bled after I had the surgery, which every woman will, but that only literally lasted for like a week and a half. It didn't really last that long. And then you have like the yellowish stuff that comes out discharge, and I believe that's called Lochia, it's L-O-C-H-I-A. And um, I had that for a little bit as well, um, but the, because I'm primarily or exclusively breastfeeding, um, I guess that's why the bleeding was to a minimum. 
But anyhow, my doctor did mention that when you exclusively breastfeed, you are pretty much that's pretty much like your birth control for the first eight weeks because you're not supposed to have a period. Well, let me tell you this. So I'm gonna jump into another subject because that's gonna kind of tie into the menstrual cycle and all of that. So I was a little extra y'all, um, you know, around three and a half weeks, I had some needs, you know, so um, I was no longer bleeding or anything like that. So we did the do. Now, as far as having sex postpartum after a C-section, I will encourage all women out there to wait at least six weeks like you're supposed to. Don't be like me. Don't be disobedient. Don't be extra. Don't be a thought. Just, you know, wait the six weeks because what happened to me after that was I had a full on heavy period and it started to scare me because I was having the clotting. So after, I'm a backtrack, so after I had, you know, my baby, like the next day or so, I started having my normal cycle and I had clotting come out, which is normal because I think it's a part of the placenta or something still coming out of you. And they pretty much say as long as you don't have like golf ball size um, clot, it's completely normal. So when I was being a thought, you know, three and a half weeks postpartum, um, and I begged my husband, like, I know it sounds terrible, because he was like, you know, let's just do what the doctor says in the way, because I was extremely, um, you know, high risk throughout my whole pregnancy, and I had pretty much a high risk um, delivery, but everything worked out good, because I followed a lot of my doctor's instructions, but it was just kind of scary, a scary situation, so. It wasn't like I was begging him, but he was like against it. Like I was pretty much like a bad, a bad influence or peer pressure. So anyhow, and you know, he was just really like, you know, I'm not sure, but anyway, I was a thought. So thoughts sometimes would be winning, you know. So anyhow, um, so with that being said, I had a whole week of a menstrual cycle and it freaked me out and I was so afraid to go and get my pap done because my pap smear done because I was like oh my gosh she's gonna see that I did something and she's gonna be mad because my daughter she is very like transparent like she keeps it real she like will go off on me as if I'm like her little sister or something like she don't care but I love that about her because she really took the and she went the extra mile for me for my baby like I cherish her so much and actually because of my cycle that I had after, I shouldn't have had a cycle. So that freaked me out. So as far as, um, you know, sex postpartum, you know, definitely don't be like me. Wait a full um, six weeks because I know sometimes when we stop, you know, bleeding and menstruating, you're like, okay, I'm in the clear. Um, maybe not if you've had a vaginal birth, but definitely a C-section because our vaginas are obviously not affected by that. But when I tell you, um, I definitely would have waited because that really scared me, like just having that um, cycle. And I wasn't sure if it was normal or not, but what freaked me out the most about it was the clotting, you know? So um, definitely take care of yourselves, but listen to your doctor's advice because um, what can happen is you could rupture your uterus from that. You could also get pregnant. <laughs> And no one wants to get pregnant back to back. Now, some women do, you know, but I am not trying to be like them. I am trying to enjoy my baby, enjoy my 10 year old and just live my life. I don't even think I want to have any more children because I have one of each. So unless there's going to be some eunuchs being born, I'm either going to have another boy or another girl. So I'm pretty much good. You know, 29, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm good with the babies. Like I don't really need any more babies at this point in my life. Um, the next thing that I want to jump into is the scarring. So I'm going to backtrack and go back to the scarring. So because I'm plus size and I definitely want to put this out there, you have a fupa fat above your private areas. So um, you, when you have a C-section in 2019, I think they're doing it now where they glue you back together. 
But in my case, you know, I got staples. So I had to keep my staples in for a whole week before they removed them. Now, I'm not sure if that's how they normally do it. I've heard some women go two days after, some women go a week after. But my instructions that were given to me during discharge was that, you know, I needed to just lather my body when I'm bathing and let the soap run down to the incision area. You don't want to scrub it or anything like that because you don't want it to open back up. So I followed those instructions. Well, I'm plus size. So those instructions will work for a woman that is pretty much not overweight. You know, like most women that, you know, you have a baby, so your belly's poking out when you're pregnant. For, well, whether you're normal size or whether you're plus size. But generally, if you're plus size, that means you've already had a stomach prior to getting pregnant. So you're adding to the fat that you already had. You know, so it's a little bit different for us because we have extra. So in our scenario, you need to pull up your stomach and I hate to sound so gross when I say it, but if you're watching C-section recovery tips, I'm just gonna keep it real with y'all. It's no point to even fake the funk. So you need to pull that little fat up that you got up underneath your stomach and you need to either pat it with some soap and water because if not, you're gonna be in my situation. I listened to the doctors where they said, let the water run down. Well, I'm overweight. So of course it ended up getting infected because it was moisture and everything just sitting there. So she had to put me on these antibiotics. I think it was amoxicillin or a Z pack. She put me on those for seven days. And what I did was they cleaned, they cleaned it up and then um, they put those little strips on there. Like whoever did it at the hospital didn't even put the strips there. So that was crazy, you know, but I was so drugged up to even care or pay attention to what they had going on. I was drugged out of my mind. Um, but anyhow, they went ahead and cleaned it up, put the dressing on there, put the little strips on there. And then what I did after that was I would take my little um, rag or my loofah and I would just gently, you know, rub in that area and rinse it. And I would just take my hand with like the shower water scooping down and just let it, um, you know, lather under there. And then what I would do would take a towel and I would put a towel there and just let it rest there for a little bit just to keep that area dry. Hi everyone, and I just wanted to pause the video for a moment just to let you know that the reason I was all dolled up in this video and did my makeup and everything is because after you have a baby, sometimes you can lose sight of who you are and you're beautiful, you're a glamorous gem. So you definitely want to always make sure that you're doing something for yourself, whether it's going to the spa, whether it's just getting dolled up, going on a date night with your spouse, or just doing something that you truly enjoy because being a mom and being a parent is a full-time job especially when you're trying to heal yourself and get back to your normal health and um, with you know recovering from a c-section and still having to manage your household and the baby so I just wanted to um, share that really quickly and let y'all know it's okay to still try to find your own identity again and be yourself and do something nice for you. I feel like I'm rambling, you know, but I hope that y'all have watched to the end of the video. Um, definitely give this video a big thumbs up if you like what I talked about here as far as my um, advice on C-section recovery tips. Um, but also leave some comments down below and let me know what you're currently doing for your C-section or if you had a C-section in the past, what did you do in your experience um, for C-section recovery? And then lastly, definitely subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Definitely hit that notification bell. That way you can be up to date every time I post a new video. And I definitely thank you all so much for staying tuned and I hope to see y'all in the next video. Bye!